When you talk about how many general miscellaneous fabricators are there in the Chicagoland area, you're talking hundreds. hundreds, and hundreds. When you're talking about public art fabricators in the country, you're talking about a few dozen. And I couldn't find any any that had been doing it longer than us. Right. <laughs> yeah. You just have to keep breathing. Right. And you can <laughs> uh, put on your business card, been doing it longer than anybody else. Uh, <laughs> which I, I don't think actually is a recommendation for a company necessarily. <laughs> Master the principles of precision sheet metal bending at FMA's Press Break Certificate course. In this two-day course, you'll learn the fundamentals and the secrets to effectively working with press breaks while earning an industry-recognized certificate. The next session is July 31st at FMA's headquarters in Elgin, Illinois. Register at fmamfg.org. Welcome to the Fabricator Podcast. This is Dan Davis at the Fabricator Magazine, joined by Lincoln Bruner. How do? And behind the camera are Gareth Slager. Hello. And Brandon Geyer. Hello. Hello. This is very informal. I'm staking my way through this. <laughs> uh, today's episode, we have a gentleman from Vector Custom, Custom Fabrication. Fabrication. Is that right? Yep. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're going to chat with them about some of their uh, activities in the public art world, as well as architectural and uh, structural. No, is that right? Architectural. Yeah. Well, architectural, well, architectural, less structural. Well, it was it was a real melding of the art and architect and, yeah. and construction world. I mean, they, they clearly don't see a difference. Uh, there's no clear delineation between right. art and architecture with them. It's all one world. Yeah. So. Even they had a hard time trying to describe the the difference between the two. They're like, right. oh, they didn't know where to put certain projects on their website. Uh, they yeah, took real pride, real pride in their work. Yeah. They do. I figure we talk about art because we're such highbrow individuals. Yes. Pinkies oh. out when we drink our afternoon tea. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's, uh, <laughs> Making well, I, sure it's just warm enough to be warm, but not so hot that it fogs our monocles. <laughs> so. We're going to uh, go on a fox hunt later. Yes. I, uh, I think I'd get the conversation started. I know uh, one of my favorite installations that I've come across is uh, was covered in the Mar uh, May edition of the Fabricator. It was a uh, Sasquatch, yes, <laughs> Sas Sasquatch uh, metal uh, sculpture. sculpture. I was always take like you walk into the Chicago Art Institute and you're sort of just awed by everything around you and I don't want to divert the conversation from our metal fabrication friends, but um, there's something about great art and it's like, I don't know what you'd call great art like as a set definition, but when you're in the presence of it, you know it. That's right? what I like about art yes. is that it's debatable. Yes. Yeah. And that Sasquatch piece is nothing to is. take away from wow. the geniuses that are able to get their works in museums. Right. But uh, I love big, bad, and bodacious. Yes. And, uh, you know, we, we, we pretty regularly cover, like, some of this big stuff in the, on the back page in The Fabricator. Mm -hmm. And, frankly, I, w I, would, I would have that in my front yard. Yeah. <laughs> so they're, they're from uh, Augusta, Missouri. Right? Missouri. Yeah. yeah, I remember now. The Missouri or Missouri? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we did talk about that. Yes. Yeah. Missouri. Yeah, we're going to say it like we're not. Well, we have one there. Missouri res residence with us. That's right down the road from where I live. Is there it? You, go. you should go it's check it out. Have you ever seen a Bigfoot? Yeah. I'm, no. Well, they've okay. got a giant constantly duck. looking, but haven't found one. Have yeah. you guys, have you guys See, been to the giant uh, muskie up in northern Wisconsin? I think we've actually covered that, I think, have we? in a past article. I haven't uh, been there, but I have uh, seen pictures of it. I think well, I, did a, I had a conversation with Ivan Eiler. And he did the world's largest brown trout. Yes. It, somewhere in Michigan, I think. Yes. Yeah. He, he had to locate the what was then the world's largest brown trout somewhere like New Zealand. And he just made it like two feet bigger. <laughs> I was like, all right. And then we moved it to Texas. Yeah, every... right. So we've had the conversation with uh, Ray Ripple about her giant armadillo. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We, I, I think if there's anything I can do to help support the fabrication and installation of more giant Metal art. Yes. Yes. That would be good. I'm, I'm trying to think like what I would like to see next. We got a Sasquatch going. Uh, oh, in front of the building. Yeah. Have that I'm a big right fan there. of like, actually, that's it. I think we should have giant metal s 
sculptures of cryptids. The Frog Man from Ohio, Moth Man from oh, wow. West Virginia. Yeah. Some of these may exist already. I'm just throwing out probably some of the, the uh, chup old Chupacabra. Yeah, <laughs> Chupacabra. you got the Beast of Bray Road up in uh, Elkhorn, Wisconsin. Okay, we yeah. need a uh, a jackalope from South Dakota. I'm betting a jackalope exists. I don't yeah. know that for a fact though. There's well, got to be. A I giant think we should commission one somewhere. We should, do we not have a, like an art commissioning fund here? We we should. If we're going to support the industry. I think we need to talk to some. Board. Start raising funds. <laughs> Start raising funds for this. Yeah, I think. I think I found my calling. Goodbye, everyone. <laughs> we have no. I, I seriously, I, being a, a true South Dakota native as I am, uh, I think a jackalope out front of the building would be uh, be a, a prime addition. We're missing out on here tourist attractions. Oh, yes. We we've talked about Kevin Stone before. He did those huge Game of Thrones dragons. Yeah, oh, dragons. dragons. Yeah. That's a good point. This is one of my favorites. Is the this guy in South Dakota? Speaking of South Dakota, killing a giant this, dog. Well, it was it's the a bear, my Hugh, friend. Oh, it's a Hugh bear. Glass guy. It was the oh uh, yeah from the movie The Reverend. Yeah. Oh, the Revenant. 15, Revenant. Yes. Yeah. That guy really this, exists. That yeah. Guy really this existed. Is, this guy did a like a scrap metal art piece. Uh, the artist's name is. John Lopez. He does some really cool stuff. Well, I mean, as far as the vector guys go, I think the one that stood out to us was the the bots. Yes. Yeah. Uh, big r red, like, so, I mean, blocks. In terms that, of that, being iconoclastic, yeah. Yeah. yeah I mean, that's Marquee the kind of, Chicago. that's the kind of, like, you really want to talk about it, but you realize that's probably, like, one of the projects that, you know, they're not as... I proud don't say proud. It? They're proud of it, yeah. But yeah. it's just like to me, that's the type of stuff that gets my attention. Yeah, it, it's so it's kind of fun. Yep. Yeah, it's so its own thing. I mean, you look at the 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 way it's set up and depicted. Yeah. Like it's holding up the building. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, these guys that you know, they they were pretty um, kind of cagey when it comes to you know describing their own work. Yeah, they were um, more concerned about hyping up other artists instead of yeah, their own. Yeah, yeah. They didn't want to talk about themselves that much, but the the ideas underlying their work, I mean, is vast. I mean, you got yeah. the staircases, you got the bots, then you've got the, uh, what was it, the Lucent Technologies uh, piece at the John Hancock building yeah. that we talked about. I mean, that's a that's almost breathtaking. Yeah, how, it's true. Yeah, I think it's just Lucent. I don't think it's affiliated with technologies. I, I love the fact that people are still out there creating really kind of stunning pieces like this. And they're being commissioned. Uh, good artists and good fabricators are still being uh, brought in and paid good money to create really monumental well, stuff yeah, like that. You know, it's, I think the gap neat. between the folks doing the production stuff and the, these creative types doing these one-offs. Yeah. I mean, it's not that far. No, it's yeah. not. I mean, it's the same skills involved, but just a far different yeah. final product. Passion yeah. a vision some time. Yeah. yeah. And the amount of collaboration that takes. Yeah. That oh. it takes to. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was sort of uh, and you'll hear uh, just how deep that collaboration goes. They've got a whole roster of go-to contractors and and fabricators and yeah. other businesses that they lean on yeah like but our I mean, friends at chicago metal world yeah. products yeah yeah, yeah. And the went family and yeah All right, this is way more serious than it's ever been yeah uh before we go back to the interview uh do you believe in sasquatch or not i do i do actually Seriously? i do really i want to believe yeah. i don't believe in sasquatch i believe in the yeti all right we're splitting hairs <laughs> <laughs> the yeti. he Brandon, has his own opinion. Opinion. Both. There he's out go. there Good for you. Yes. There's something but out there. One? Is it one? Multiple. Okay. Yeah. Why Sasquatch? Sasquatch? Why Sasquatch? Not Sasquatch and why Yeti? I was just trying to be a devil's <laughs> advocate. So you don't. That's why. <laughs> so I believe in an Asian Sasquatch, just not a North American. <laughs> I don't know. Sure. I. Who, who knows what's out there? I believe in more like creepy things in the sea than I do on land. On that note, put the kids to bed, grab a hot chocolate, gather around the fire, because it'll probably air in July. But anyway, you'll like it. So uh, enjoy this episode of the Fabricator Podcast with Seth Goddard and Steve Mueller of Vector Custom Fabrication. This episode of the Fabricator Podcast is brought to you by Fabtech. Registration is now open for Fabtech 2023. Join us September 11th through the 14th 
at McCormick Place in Chicago for North America's largest metal forming, fabricating, welding, and finishing trade show. Meet with over 1,300 world-class suppliers, discover innovative solutions, and find the tools you need to improve productivity and increase profits. Visit fabtechexpo.com to register today. And now back to the episode. Uh, hello. Uh, welcome to the Fabricator Podcast. I'm Dan Davis with the Fabricator Magazine, uh, joined today by... Uh, Colleague and friend, Rich. We had Burnett. to make that clear the other episode. <laughs> Lee, 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 Lee. I finally made it. Yeah. Lincoln and Bruner and our guests today are uh, Seth Goddard and Steve Mueller of Vector Custom Fabricating. Uh, they're uh, in the city of Chicago and specialize in architecture, sculpture, and art. And I think we're going to have a pretty interesting conversation today. Uh, no, no pressure, <laughs> but. Before uh, we get started, uh, Steve, uh, Seth, can you explain maybe your roles with the company and maybe touch upon the uh, origins of Vector? Go ahead. Oh, well, um, I started the company when I got out of uh, grad school with a couple other sculptors in 78. And uh, when we got out of school, we had no more tools and shop to fabricate oh, okay. anything, right? So uh, we decided that we um, weren't teachers and we weren't recognized artists either. So we would um, put together the facility that we wanted to make continue making our own work, but uh, turn it to commercial purposes. Put out our shingle, be hired guns for other artists who got commissions um, too big for their own studio. And one of the one of the models um, that I had in mind was uh, Lippincott, and they were out in um, out east Pennsylvania, I believe. Um, anyway, that was the idea, and um, it, it basically has unfolded for the last forty five years along those lines. Wow. Um, and Seth, when did you come to uh, Vector? Um, like Steve, I went into art school and had dreams and aspirations of making art, um, sculpture. And, um, when I graduated, I came to Chicago and found Vector by chance, really just looking for work. And, um, it was a really good fit. It turns out, you know, these guys all had the same background that I did, which was art school and, um, and interest to metal fabrication and casting um, and so it was a really good fit so I've been there since 05 2005 20 years with Vector did you have a feel for what you were getting into I did I had no idea actually I thought I was getting <laughs> into a fabrication job um, I actually applied across the street at another company and they couldn't offer me a living wage and so they're like well you can try out vector across the street so i stumbled in the drawer by oh, chance wow. really um but it's perfect fit so yeah so if you you were applying at a fab shop did you have fab skills that were kind of marketable yeah i'd worked in a fabrication shop uh where i went to school in iowa city mm -hmm. um for a year and i had spent the previous four years working around metals in the foundry Okay. Of that school, making wow. art and stuff. So just cutting and welding and things mm -hmm. like that. Yeah, the shop I worked at in Iowa City um, was more of like a you know I did some inloader bucket blades and like whatever grills, tables, um, railings, staircases, stuff like that. But it was a I learned I got my feet wet there. Wow. You know. Yeah. And Steve, how does the business break out nowadays in terms of balancing? kind of the commercial work with some of the artistic interests? Well, it's, it's uh, leaning in the uh, public art okay. realm, but that pendulum can, can swing right. it's yeah. with just a few jobs. Sure. We're a dozen people, Okay, not a huge facility, right. uh, 6,000 under roof, 9,000 outdoors. Okay. okay. So a few jobs one way or the other can swing that balance. We didn't, uh, you did ask us what we did, our jobs. Mm. We, uh, Seth is in charge of production. Okay. So we start, we hired him to work in the shop. Okay. 
and now he's uh, an owner and in charge of production. Okay. And I continue to be involved with sales and project management, but the ownership of the company has moved on to the next generation. That's exciting. So when you got started, Steve, what was really your driving passion? Like what, what got you up in the morning and said, yeah, I really, I'm excited to do this? Uh, fabricating art. Cool. Yeah. Give me an example of something that early on you were like, yes, this is a perfect example of what I love to do. What was a project that really turned your crank? Uh, shortly after we started, uh, somebody came, <laughs> pulled a picture uh, from a magazine, a uh, Japanese magazine. Hmm. They wanted a stair. It was Robert Wislow. Um, uh, wanted to know if we could build this stair for him. Okay. And based on the photo and our experience fabricating metal, we went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sure. <laughs> and, and, and we did. Um, gee, that was an early one. Um, the, the whole thing of uh, commercialized, trying to make a business mm. out of something, yeah. that was energizing yeah. and fearful. I mean, that would pop you out of bed. Yeah, um, either in a cold sweater. You were, you, you were going to get a paycheck <laughs> if, if you didn't do something that week. That's motivating. somebody. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, and acquiring the equipment that we wanted, which we did slowly. It was all used, this, that, yeah. or the other thing. What did you have when you first started out? Was it mainly like uh, a lot um, of hammers and a lot of banging? Uh, I don't know how much history you want, but <laughs> it was it was, it was some, some hand tools. Yeah. And uh, we moved to Chicago to start the business, uh, so we had no customers. Oh, wow. So um, uh, after we hung our tools up on the wall, we decided now was find a customer. Yeah. And I went through the uh, yellow pages when there were still yellow pages. <laughs> yeah, there are and uh, pages. talked to um, Jim Miller with um, Eureka Welding, and um, said that we would be happy to do any work. That I mean, that was my pitch to every company that I called. Overflow, whatever you know, we can help you out. And uh, he said, "Do you do uh, field repair work?" I said, sure. <laughs> um, gave me an address to go repair a, a loading dock bumper. Uh, quickly ran up to Wisco and rented a portable welder. Mm. Strapped it down on the back of the pickup truck. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah. And uh, what you got to do? Th that, that's how we got started. And Jim Miller turned out to be a lifelong friend and mm. customer. And now he does a lot of work for us as well. That's awesome. Right. And he turned out to be two blocks away. <laughs> from where we are now yeah when we started uh we worked for him for a half uh, for many months without ever meeting him wow wow small community though right yeah in terms of projects nowadays give us an idea of like what's a typical day at vector in terms of what might be happening in the shop well like currently we're working on uh, a big staircase um where's that going lynn am i free to say that lending capital I think so. <laughs> we can use our uh, <laughs> super special effects. If it's not. <laughs> uh, we do a lot of staircases. Um, I mean, for flagship stores, you know, around the city, banks. Um, Boeing's been a client for several things. Um, I know it's noticing on your website that yeah. the Wind Trust building. Yeah, uh, that was just a spectacular mm -hmm. example of like integrating with old architecture. Mm -hmm. I mean, the building's ninety nine years old, right? Like that neoclassical Gothic style architecture, but you blended that brass staircase right in there. Right. Yeah. Was that a big job? Was that was it? Is it difficult to do something like that, or is it sort of just de rigueur for you? I mean, it's across the board. You know, like there are some certainly some very challenging aspects to that, and one of them. Um, one of the founders, Mike Wilkie, really um, nailed was uh, that spiraled corner where mm -hmm. there was a turn in the radius. We couldn't do that with any, you know, um, standard materials. We we had it printed. Um, we had it printed large so that when it was cast and shrunk, it would be the right size. Stuff mm. like that. So okay. those corner those corner pieces were involved. Mm. They're cast. Oh, wow. yeah. rather than you know 
Fabric- standard fabrication techniques. Wow. You, um, did you get that from somebody else? The castings? Um, Mexican Foundry. Okay. Yeah. I mean, our, our story really is we work with so many different companies, mm-hmm. machine companies, other fabricators. Uh, we don't do any foundry work ourselves, mm-hmm. and most of what we do does not involve foundry. Mm-hmm. But that's one of the exciting things about um, uh, really my work life is how many different companies we, we work with. That's cool. It keeps you on your toes. Is it? Yeah. It's, it's kind of funny hearing the story because – We've done umpteenth amount of stories of people in fabricating who try to find an outlet in art, but yet here is kind of the flip script, right. where the artists kind of found a kind of found a fabricating business to help accompany its interest in art. Do you do you wrestle with that? Or are you okay with the balance between the two? There's really I, I'm sorry. Are we making a distinction between the architectural metals? I'm not and sure. Art? Maybe maybe it's kind of the same. Maybe I mean you're doing the same. Uh, the interesting processes. architectural metals uh, have provides a lot of the same gratifications. Yeah. Uh, as as sure. making a work of art, the the one stair for mm-hmm. uh, water tower, um, that spiral one. I mean, uh, yeah, we didn't know whether to put that under uh, architectural or, <laughs> or art. Yeah. But that that's um, an amazing. So when when we do something like that, it it's matter. it's a blur, right? Uh, when we're doing general miscellaneous, it's a different category, yeah, and um, doesn't interest uh, me that much. Mm-hmm. But um, it helps pays the bills. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did you did you? I mean, I, I imagine when you first started, a lot of it was kind of drafting. Have how has the company made that adjustment to like 3D CAD to kind of execute some of these visions? Is it still sometimes starting on a napkin or drafting it out and then moving? How does Absolutely, that work? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, ideas come from all over and fall in our laps in all various forms. <laughs> right. <laughs> sometimes it's just in somebody's head, you know, and we have to figure out what to do or it's a sketch or it's a drawing that's almost there, but without an understanding of fabrication needs to be developed, right. you know, into something that can actually be built. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But it, it, it then does move into the 3d. Right. right. File, and that's everything now. And that's, that's pretty wonderful. Even, I mean, we, even we, some we, of the art pieces, everything. Oh, wow. Yeah. I wow. mean, you just can't con- yeah. uh, uh, connect the parts. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, right. One of the owners now, the that second generation I was telling you about, it's sort of coincidence. Three people started the company, now th- three other sculptors on it. It wasn't by design, just happened that way. Yeah. One of them, Nathan, um, uh, learned how to uh, draw 3D while working with us wow. and stuff like that. Now, if he can't get it all done, he knows how to outsource it. But I... I can name a, a few projects that never would have been fabbed and worked. Oh wow! Without the three D file. Yeah. Oh. So when you're working on a, uh, a, a, a like the water tower piece, the extremely artistic type of thing, um, it, does it evolve as it goes? I mean, is you got a you have a vision and you've got all these parts working together in the shop. I mean, how how uh, you know with a small shop. What are you doing to accommodate the vision uh, when it's not quite working uh, as as you originally envisioned? Well, it's a good question. It would be almost problem by problem, yeah. You know, to to respond to that. But right. that that spiral s- stair for uh, water tower that was uh, Gensler was the architect, and okay. then um, Thornton Thomas said he was the engineer. By the time it hit the shop, we we pretty much had things. Figured out. I mean, okay. you will hit uh, technical problems, mm-hmm. sure. But what you're trying to achieve is pretty well def- still defined. Okay. Yeah. And that, that's when Seth and others, you know, try to figure it out. It's not. That's working the best this part. Way. I mean, yeah. the challenge. I mean, that's really what yeah. I feel like. Where Vector departs from other fab shops is that we're, you know, we can. I don't know. I don't feel like anything's impossible. You know, like, um, I don't, I, I, I welcome the challenge, you know, and that's, that's what keeps it interesting for me. That's cool. I don't want to build 
a thousand feet of fence. Right. You know, <laughs> right. You and, by, to... and by the way, we're not competitive. So it's not a business model. Yeah. Mm. I mean, if, if, right. if, and, and if everybody else can build it, then you're one of uh, 10 numbers. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, our number won't be competitive. Right. We're, mm. we're, we're spreading our overhead over a dozen people, not 120 people. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Are you working primarily with architects, like on some of these projects, or is it sometimes the client comes to you first before maybe pulling in uh, the GC or even the architect? The, the custom architectural mostly is all done for GCs. Okay. Mm. You end up working with the architect, and you have a history with architectural mm -hmm. offices. Right. Mm -hmm. But they never actually buy anything from you. Oh, and okay. No, I mean, it's up to the GC. That's, oh, that's the GCs. Right, right job to procure right. it gotcha. so right. you can have uh ongoing good relationship with a designer or architect but, but it's the at GC, the end yeah. of the day yeah. it's the gc who's making the purchase mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then for the um artwork it's usually the artist or the commissioning body um who is our direct customer it could be department of cultural affairs for chicago Mm -hmm. You know, could be a private company. Whatever. It could yeah. be. It could be a private collector. In which mm -hmm. case, we're probably doing the work directly for the artist. Um, I'm curious about the actual processes you find yourself using over and over in house, in terms of welding, in terms of the the materials that you're crafting. Mm -hmm. Like a stainless is a brass. Like we were talking about before. Is it you working with regular carbon steel? Like, what are your kind of mainstays when it comes to that kind of thing? I mean, I think the material, it varies. Like we work in a, a, most of them um, pretty regularly. I would say titanium perhaps is something we've never really dabbled in or had a, re a request to, to work with. Um, brass is not, but everything else is pretty standard. Um, okay. Silicon bronze. We got a project right now that we're making a sculptural base out of silicon bronze. Um, steel, core 10 steel is a big piece we're working on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I think more in general, to answer your question, we're like, um, outside of the material, it's like we put everything together at the end, you know, like, so okay. we're outsourcing a lot of these, um, cutting and forming of the metals, okay. um, to other shops. To other, yeah, other shops and uh, bring it all together at the end, basically. Okay. okay. And so that's got to keep keep you and your toes logistically uh, as production manager. Yeah, it's a lot of balls to keep in there and scheduling yeah. and making sure things come together well and on time. Yeah. How many projects might be kind of going through the shop floor one time? Right. Like I said, we were working on a stair right now, a big stair, and we also have this monumental sculpture um by John Henry um that's halfway in f through fabrication um maybe a little further that thing's enormous it's like 65 <laughs> feet tall there's one on the lake what? front similar uh diversity oh. harbor okay wow. um really big piece um or i'm excited about that um uh, it's not hard work it's just big you know yeah. so there's a lot of moving around of heavy materials and yeah um outside of that you know we got a smattering of other smaller middle sized projects going at any given time. They're in different stages, mm -hmm. you know, um, they're in the drawing phase or maybe they're out to blast right now. There's a project at the getting sandblasted mm -hmm. before it's ready for the next phase. Um, that's an art installation, um, for here in Chicago, right? Are you familiar with that one? The police memorial? Yeah. Hmm. Um, yeah, it's Grant Park or Millennial Park. Oh, wow. We do our production mm -hmm. meeting once a, a week. There's 60 jobs on there. That oh, are in some, terms of some not yet ready, but they some are on the board. There's like maybe two dozen oh, that are okay. in process somewhere at any given time. Yeah. Okay. So you guys are definitely keeping busy on the, the front end of... Is there literally like a traveler out on the shop floor where we have a driver? Is that what you mean? Like somebody's running like, around picking up stuff and delivering no, stuff? Like a, uh, you know, a packet. 
it's kind of showing what the what's the jobs about prints and everything else. Yeah, well, I I mean, I print out a job list every week. Okay, is that what you mean? A traveler? What like in terms of details of like I look over here and somebody's working on this thing. Does he have like his prints out in mm -hmm. front of him, or just do people kind of access uh, mm. a computer monitor to see whether those digital uh, prints may be? Is it how does that work on your shop floor? We use we still use drawings. Okay. When there's a requirement to access a 3D model, we'll go look at it together. Gotcha. But yeah, yeah, we don't have any monitors yeah. or computers set up on the floor for these guys. Right. You're not looking at napkins on the floor or anything. Like that. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Sometimes that's all that's required, though. It's like three numbers here. Yeah. This is what you need to know. <laughs> What's your biggest challenge on the shop floor in terms of like trying to balance mm -hmm. all these responsibilities and stay on top of uh, deadlines? For me personally, it's just. Um, keeping everybody on track, all their yeah. questions answered, mm, right. you know, because mm -hmm. each project has unique challenges mm -hmm. and, um, you know, you just got to keep everybody moving along mm -hmm. and, yeah. you know, so. Do some of those challenges result in trying to figure out the solution away from the project? You know what I mean? Can you, can you afford to make an error on some of these projects? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Short answer. Preferably not. <laughs> no. Um, I mean, it's a team effort. We all go over things together. If yeah. like, if it's not a, if it's not a no brainer, then like, we'll, I'll, we get everybody's head involved yeah. in the fabricator's opinion and um, mm -hmm. management, um, mm -hmm. the client, whoever needs to come in and answer questions about how to make things happen. Mm -hmm. Right. Know, if it's an aesthetic decision or, you know, structural, we'll call up a, you know, our, some of your partners, our, our engineers or whoever, you know, so a lot of, uh, a lot of people to make things happen, you know, has the business for the company, does it follow economic kind of, uh, ebbs and flows? Yeah. Or, or is it kind of off on its own due to the nature of the customers you work with? We're such a, a small canary in the, mm -hmm. in the mine. Right. <laughs> overall. That, um, <laughs> I, I'm sure when uh, construction is is healthy and robust in Chicago, it must float, right? Our, our business, but it, it's not like oh, let's see, what was it, 2008? I mean, when things right. tanked because we're uh, architectural metals, that's the end of the construction cycle. Yeah. So we didn't feel it for a year. Okay. Mm. But we sort of felt it the following yeah. the year after that. Gotcha. Yeah. And then the uh, but we we talk about this all the time. You know how worried are we supposed to be? Well, I, I've spent decades worrying, and it's got me nowhere. So, yeah. um, I, you know, if 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 something were horrendous to happen to the economy, we're all part of that, right? You know, outside of that, we just take it, um, take the work as it comes in. Yeah. Hit the yellow pages well, again, yeah, right? Yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, um, you, your skills are trans transfer much faster than mine <laughs> yes the ai to, stories remind me of that every day <laughs> you actually build things yeah put things together. yeah oh uh, yeah it, it's a whole mix as to what you know what what's the future you know you have um people predicting doom and all the rest of it I, and they're probably right in some sort of way uh and will be right a company this size has always managed to find enough work right mm-hmm and we do not like letting people go. Every, everybody, I mean, that's a horrendous part of uh, any business. Right. Um, so we're very careful not to take on too many people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. we, we don't want to have the opposite conversation with right. that same party. So if someone's in Chicago, what are some of the like places or pieces that people could take a look at and say like, hey, Vector did that. I just heard them well, on a very the, popular podcast. Yeah, we, we got a <laughs> we we got our little route, a uh, tourist guide route uh, downtown. The um, John Hancock Building's got an amazing piece. They remodeled their south lobby. Okay. okay. Uh, the owner of the building did Steve oh. Hearn, and that's um, lucent a piece of sculpture by a British mm. oh, artist. Wow. Uh, that that gets photographed a lot when you're in the lobby. How uh, long did that take to actually fabricate, put together? Um, beginning to end, you know, with all the different phases involved, probably mm -hmm. six months. Wow, wow! And there's like more. I mean, it's there's some uh, multimedia aspect to it. Is that what I was seeing? Fire, fiber optics, yeah. hand blown glass. Again, wow. we we partner with. Oh right. 
Well, you're not these. blowing all the glass in your shop. <laughs> no, no. And um, what found, that was studio right around the corner from us. Um, Ignite. Yeah. Oh wow. The Ignite blue glass, which is in the those? same sort of industrial neighborhood we are. It's crazy. Um, wow. Is that you? Yeah, Yo- Yoko that Ono <laughs> is uh, the piece is in uh, Jackson Park. Jackson Park. Yeah. Yeah. You get to meet her. Yeah, we did. Oh, that's awesome. Pretty cool. Very cool. Yoko Ono, we'll have to give a shout out to Chicago Road, Chicago Road Metal Products, who mentioned us on their visit here. Oh, that's awesome. They rolled the, and I think they spoke about that one. They rolled those leaves yeah, she for did. the yes. Yoko Ono piece. Now we're rolling Which leaves. I heard was um, exciting. Exciting, to say the least. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it went into the roll two ways, the easy mm-hmm. way. And then uh, I've got pictures of Joe went, uh, I mean, the, then, then you would curve it the other way, and it, the rolls would want to reject right. the plate. It's a big plate, five inches right. thick, wow. and it it's, would slip and shoot out. Well, they they wow. finally figured out their. This is um, let's see, Alro water jet cut the plates. So <laughs> at the end of this process, uh, there was a, a big reception for the piece, and we invited all our. Um, material suppliers and oh, that's awesome. subcontractors. And it's a huge, it's a mm-hmm. picture of a lot of people. Mm. And they were, the client, the park district was interested in uh, how many different Chicago enterprises mm-hmm. were involved in this mm-hmm. particular project. So, sure. but I always try to include and recognize um, everybody involved anyway. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You were talking before about you know, in your early days, like, hey, can you go do this uh, on-site, you know, repair job? Sure, we we do that now, <laughs> and uh, you betcha. I mean, is there any job that you won't take, uh, or you think, oh That's gosh? Pretty good question. <laughs> <laughs> what do you What do you ask? What do you need done? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, sure. I mean, we're we're definitely not suited for some things, and sure. we'll be honest about that. When yeah. people, you know, if there's a a better outfit. Uh, you know, we're. All, I think we have a mentality that we're all in this together, and mm. and we we know what we do well, and we won't. You know, for the sake of getting a job, extend past our skill set. Right, yeah. that's dangerous. Yeah. I did that once as a freelance writer. I, I heard about it very very quickly. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you take pride being a Chicago fabricator, Chicago based fabricator? Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think we're well located in the center of the the, the continent here. Um, yeah. As far as the Chicago sculpture scene, he's got Steve's got more of a history with that. Um, I don't know. I think I'm I'm thinking more about the U.S. Mm. Um, and internationally too. So I don't. I guess I don't associate our um, our services with just Chicago. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's an interesting question because, yeah, in recent years, I'm a transplant. Okay. I, mean, I really didn't have a locale. My my dad, we lived all over. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I came to Chicago because it was the nearest big city mm. after graduating from Champaign-Urbana. Mm-hmm. And over the decades, yeah, I, I I sort of, I've I've got to admit, I, I think I really like Chicago. Yeah. And I'm proud of it. Yeah. yeah. It, and it's a, a cool... Um, people are great. A lot of, um, I'm trying to think of something that isn't cliche. Right. Um, we collaborate with so many different companies. Yeah. And, cool. and, uh, I suppose you could find companies like that in other major cities, but, um, right. Yeah. And I mean, the reason I, I, I that think it's cool. That it's such Chicago. a history of manufacturing city of broad shoulders mm, architecture yeah well yeah, yeah. exactly and we were t- talking earlier about uh finkel company right that was in uh close to the Clyburn area i don't want to get the neighborhood wrong but you know that that manufacturing presence that was right there on the edge of a very hoity-toity like residential type area mm-hmm. and the the ability for that to maintain its presence and still do its job uh, mm-hmm. Until recently, moving, uh, you know, to me, people kind of people under under appreciate the manufacturing still occurring within the city limits. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 
obviously, as you mentioned, architecture, art installations, it, it, it kind of uh, is, a, is a nice circle of support. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And it, it, you, you know more than I. I mean, you've kind of developed, a, it seems like, uh, relationships with others in the city and maybe just outside to kind of help you bring some of these projects to life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's city and the burbs for sure. Yeah. yeah. Did you have any idea that your company would get to this point and be able to kind of uh, emerge as a specialist when it comes to artistic installations and some commercial installations that frankly look like art? That's, that's a good question. I, I, I don't know what I expected. Uh, <laughs> we, we've been um, making a go of it, earning mm-hmm. a living. Uh, a lot of people go into business to make a lot of money. If that's your criteria, we, we could have done better, right. done something else. But um, now that I'm towards the end of my career, I'm, I'm really glad we didn't, I didn't go for some other goals. Yeah. I'm, glad, I'm glad I stuck with um, the satisfactions of making things that I'm interested in mm-hmm. and working with the artists. Right. Yeah. So uh, that, that's very rewarding. I mean, if you do it long enough, I mean, we just recently in the last few years sort of went, well, where do we fit into mm-hmm. the larger world mm-hmm. of public art fabricators? And it turns out there, there's a few dozen of them. Okay. Mm-hmm. Now, when you talk about how many general miscellaneous fabricators are there into the Chicagoland area, mm-hmm. you're talking hundreds. Hundreds and hundreds. When you're talking about public art fabricators in the country, you're talking about a few dozen. And I couldn't find any any that had been doing it longer than us. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you just have to keep breathing just <laughs> long <laughs> enough. And, Despite and, and, your alacrity with the yellow and, pages, you can Yeah, play. and you can <laughs> uh, put on your business card, been doing it longer than anybody else, uh, <laughs> which I, I don't think actually is a recommendation for a company necessarily, <laughs> but um, that's the truth. So we do have a huge long, um, Ex- we got a lot of experience working with mm-hmm. the type of artists that uh, can command a, a, a commission like the one that went into the John Hancock. Yeah. In yeah. Or, or Yoko Ono. Mm-hmm. So yeah. when we're in that arena, we're in a very select. Right. Yes. And um, anybody that can compete with us, that's okay. Yeah. Because they're, they're needing to charge enough Mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. we don't look silly yeah. right i mean everybody has to be able to get the job done whereas some of the uh when you're when you're in the um, trenches servicing general construction uh in a city like chicago mm-hmm. you, you can just uh, end up being a grease spot right. uh on the road <laughs> at the end of end yeah. of the job yeah uh, anybody remember navy pier or Trump Tower, or right, right, right. Any, any number of projects where they're, they're casualties right and left. Yeah. So in the public art market, it's, it's a lot more selective. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did, did, of those 12 you mentioned, did they kind of follow the same steps as Vector? Or did they try to maintain more of a strictly art house type uh, oh, feel? Oh, that, that, that's interesting. <laughs> Without mentioning names. <laughs> the, um, one of them... Uh, claims, you know, shop drawings are a thing of the past. We haven't had shop drawings right. in the shop for 10 years. We, we sort of get, we sort of enjoy that. Uh, I'm not sure what it means exactly. I mean, you, you can, you can, you can target yourself to fabricate digitally. Mm-hmm. And we do try to take advantage of CAD as much as we can. But at some point, um, we're especially, um, qualified for jobs that require uh the skills of an artisan right you know you still have to have hand eye coordination if it can <laughs> all be done digitally uh, digitally and it can just be snapped together what sort of depth do your fabricators require to do that right. not much it becomes right. it becomes factory work right so we'll look at projects and every once in a while we'll go yep this has got our name on it. And usually mm. when that happens, it's mm-hmm. a combination of the, the uh, skill mm-hmm. in the shop mm-hmm. and the network of people that can Help get you. us the parts, mm-hmm. uh, material services. Mm-hmm. And we usually get those mm-hmm. once we really sink our teeth in and go, yeah, this, this, 
we're going after this one. And well, that kind of separates you from those other type 12. There are some very good companies in, in, in that uh, 12 to 20. And um, no, they're, they're, they're damn good they're companies. Good. Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, uh, your, your company puts companies together right, right. And for comparison and, yeah. and meet and greet and all the rest of it. We started to go to um, conferences for public or national oh, conferences. Okay. Wow. And that's how we've met them. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And got a better, better view of the world that we're participating in. Huh. And we started doing that a couple of years ago to answer the question of does this really make sense? Right. Especially for the the, right. the, the new owners. Like mm -hmm. I wanted to do it and did do it because mm -hmm. I you know, just wanted to. Yeah. <laughs> uh, should the company invest um, capital developing itself and putting itself out there, marketing, whatever. Right. And what we discovered is it's it's a, a big, big uh, industry, the art world. Yeah billion dollar industry absolutely there are not that many companies qualified to be servicing it mm -hmm. right so let's let's it's what we want to do anyway so let's go for it oh wow seth was this something uh try to ask the previous question a bit of a different way uh is this something that you envisioned doing 2023 when you first started in 05 when you think oh my goodness this has evolved or was this pretty much spot on with what you thought you were getting yourself into in 05, I had no idea. I mean, I didn't want to do metal fabrication work anymore. <laughs> the experience I'd had with it was very much industrial and yeah, um, not challenging. Okay, per se, and like the thousand feet of fence type of thing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Vector opened my eyes to a totally different world. Uh, I excelled there. I, you know, I think they recognized me as a, a talented asset, and um, I really settled in pretty quick. I think. Yeah. Um, and over the years got to work with artists and on art and yeah it was just it's been a natural fit so yeah to kind of build off what uh steve was mentioning how, were you excited to kind of build the company or at least get the name out there a little bit more and what was yeah. kind of the thought process behind that well at the, 2022 is when ownership change hands and we've been talking about, you know, whether or not it's viable to push the sculpture side of our business a little more mm -hmm. um, and develop relationships with people in that industry, clients. And um, yeah, I mean, we are, we're pushing that end and um, I'm stoked for it. Yeah. You know, like that's cool. I want to make art. Yeah. yeah. Where do you, where, you know, we've talked about Chicago. Where else are you sending some of these, these pieces working with people from what other parts of the world? Um, well, I have a local artist client. I just delivered a couple of small sculptural items. Those are going to um, Germany oh, wow. to okay. a client. So they've okay. sold. Um, we're in process of, uh, we were part of an installation in Charlotte recently mm -hmm. um, for Duke Energy and Experience Hall. Mm, um, okay. It's a new building there. Um, got a lot of art in and around it. Um, uh, we have a client that we've been working with over the last couple of years, Philip K. Smith the third, and um, we've been making a lot of work for him and sending it out to California. Okay. Um, Are you going on site to oversee installation of the pieces that you're creating? or is I was in Charlotte. Um, Steve just got back from California and visited Philip. Okay. Um, some of them, yeah, we're installing. Some of them we're just shipping. Okay. Other people are installing. Okay. So okay. That's awesome. Kind of just depends on what needs to be done. Yeah. yeah. Do you have time for your own personal outlets, like artistic or whatever your passion may be at the moment? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm still making art, but um, I've never wanted to support my family <laughs> and uh with that, that, that it's just it's just an activity that uh i'm a, a very strong advocate for other artists yeah, yeah, yeah i i i i get i have a gallery that represents my uh work but i've never tried to professionalize it okay so um are you still doing sculptures not sculpture it's sort of like a busman's uh okay holiday i i've I'm a defector. I make <laughs> I make flat 
art now okay <laughs> which most people would call paintings um, <laughs> but um one of my uh, original partners barry heeman has made sculpture all okay th throughout the career steve's typical response to this question is i my itch gets scratched through For work right right um in my involvement with what we do at vector yeah and i feel that way yeah so i i don't make much art anymore Right. Like really do you do home brewing or anything like that? <laughs> I mean, I've got a, a litany of uh, hobbies and whatnot that I engross in at any given time. But um, as far as art making goes, I really am just doing it for other people at this point. Okay. And I'm happy there. Yeah. I, I totally get to live in the art world and be with those people and um, and fabricate things too. And um, a little bit of the construction side of stuff too. It's all, it's great. You know? right, so cool. I think like Steve has said before, I, it definitely scratches my itch. Cool. Yeah. Are it's you crazy. guys looking out for like new artists to work with on a regular basis? You got to always because um, it's our, our business couldn't survive without repeat business. Right. But when you, t when you think about those few clients that you worked with repeatedly over years, that relationship didn't happen overnight or in a few months or a year or even one, one or two or three so when we meet an artist that um yeah i'm i'm in a great position in my uh, <laughs> my working career i i dabble now and if i come across the work of an artist that i respect mm -hmm. that gets me going oh wow and that's cool that's that, that's because it's a there are a lot of artists out there but not um you, you, I'm gravitating towards the, the people that are making stuff that I would find interesting yeah. as well. Well, Garrett's yeah. asking for personal reasons. He does a lot of clay and sculpture. Yeah, and right. yeah. Yeah. If you need one 100 feet tall, yes, yeah, yeah, we, we might be able to. The closest he gets to that is watching his VHS copy of Ghost. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So is, is Chicago, we had mentioned like being a home for like manufacturing, is Chicago still a vibrant artistic community? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So finding, yep. making these connections with people is something that's kind of can be easily found, I guess is what I'm asking. Yeah, but we try not to be, depend solely on Chicago. Right, right, right. Charlotte, yeah. Germany, <laughs> things like that. Mm -hmm. Well, those, all those projects uh, uh, eventuated through artists that work in Chicago. Oh, mm -hmm. wow. So it's just still alive. Uh, Inigo Manglano of AA is uh, that uh, Weatherfield number one is Santa Monica, California. Cool. We, so uh, it will often be uh, a Midwestern artist that okay, gets, but not not exclusively. Right. Right. Got it. We've gotten more international inquiries since our um, probe into the market. I feel yeah. like okay. Yeah. Yeah. And how would you describe that probe? I mean, going to conferences. Okay. Um, <laughs> two. Two conferences well, in, in, in two years, but it really brought together a lot of... Yeah, but you also kind of relaunched the website, though, as well. Yeah. I think you mentioned yep. that. That's right. We just made a mindset to, like, we need to reach out and talk to people, mm -hmm. you know? Like, yeah. let's collaborate wherever possible, right. you know, mm -hmm. with people and ask questions and develop relationships and visit mm -hmm. other people. Um, so we've been making the rounds, talking well, with all studios. Yeah, and to Steve's point before, I mean, you've been around long enough to where you're a known entity, I'm sure, in a lot of circles, people looking to do new installations, mm -hmm. new projects, and so that's got to help a little bit. For sure. Yeah, word of mouth, and it was sort of like, that's what we've done for decades. What could we do? How much more selective could we be with the projects that we take on Sure. if we, did, if we didn't just rely on right. word of mouth? What right. if we actually got serious about this mm -hmm. yeah that that part yeah. we've always been serious fabricators of course but what what if we tried to professionalize how we looked at the world or got the world to look at us a little more marketing a little more yeah you know getting the word out about yourself and your capabilities and yeah we've Is, been doing our research by visiting our suppliers um find out sure. more about what they're capable of sure like like, let's see your facility. And it's like, oh, we didn't know that you did that. Oh, wow. Okay. So, did you get to see the shop floor for Chicago Metal Roll products? Yeah. They won't exactly. let you back there. No? <laughs> <laughs> secret, secret sauce. They won't reveal. 
<laughs> yeah, uh, we got a tour. Um, That's awesome. And it's, it's eye-opening so that when um, someone comes to you with something that's just off off the cuff that you can be like, I know how to do, I know how to do this. Right. We can do this. Yeah. yeah. So is there anything that you'd like to do in terms of scope, scale, or maybe a type of fabrication that you haven't been involved with yet? I, I'm I, I'm pretty jealous of the fabricator that made the bean. Oh. Mm. That's messed up. Yeah. <laughs> that is. Oh, oh gee, that, that, that's a job. And they they came to us to 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 quote it. And um, wow, they, they went to a few people. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, sure. And my partner actually visited the company that made the made the bean out in California. And he th there were no trade secrets shared. Uh huh. But mm. um. I personally wouldn't want to be a part of the bean, but because um, that's a lot of polishing. I was about to say. It's a lot of polishing. I'm not, I don't want like to somebody who's like, uh, and, but, but we got to outsource empty. that polishing. That's right. That's <laughs> yeah. a really good question. I don't know. You I, missed a spot, Seth. Yeah, right? Or there's a crack or <laughs> oh. the welds look different. Um, <laughs> I'm quite satisfied. I feel like every project that comes in is yeah. a, little di a little bit different. and. Mm -hmm. I, that's great. So yeah, I mean, it, it seems like just looking at kind of the uh, represent representations on your website. I mean, fun, like complex, striking. Yeah, I mean, seriously, they've got a lot of striking type of uh, artwork. Yeah. Do you have a there. favorite project that you've worked on? Uh, Lucent um, by Wolfgang Buttress. There, the one that's in the the Hancock Jack lobby. Yeah, yeah, Hancock. Um, I think is one of the most striking pieces. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's certainly one of the most innovative. I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it looks like an atom. It looks kind of like a. It does look like special effects. Like it's got to yeah. be CGI almost. It's cool. What yeah. were some of the biggest challenges with that, that project that kind of stood out? Um, I wasn't, I, again, I was uh, a fly on the wall for a lot of it because it was in R&D for a year, I think, um, wow. before fabrication even started. Um, so at that point, in my involvement at Vector, I was fabricating and not part of all that, but from what I hear, getting those parts, I mean, they spun six foot diameter stainless steel plates into bowls and then had them CNC laser cut. And when oh, those wow. shapes 3D. popped out of that bowl, the memory came back and they were flat. Wow. And so, you know, it's back to the drawing board. Can we even do this? Right. Um, right. And they found that, well, you know, let's anneal them. So we were building racks to anneal these bowls. Wow, so they keep maintain their shape after. Yeah. we. Uh, how do we get them extracted from these six foot symbols? <laughs> um, I found mm. that if you took an air hammer and, and hit the symbol with the air hammer, that it would rattle it enough that it would eject itself. Um, I was quite pleased with that. Nobody yeah. else liked me for <laughs> the rest of the year because I was literally on a six foot symbol with this air hammer for so two weeks straight. When they're, hit, when their hearing came back. Deafening. They, yes. Yeah. <laughs> that's Seth again. That's a, uh, that's fascinating. The, we almost were unsuccessful with this piece because, uh, we were having trouble finding somebody that could laser cut 3d oh. with a change in vertical elevation right. of, I forget what it was, six inches or nine inches. And because uh, we're being interviewed by the fabricator, this is one of a few things that I think is pertinent. We found a company um, in Minnesota who had an old enough 3D laser machine uh, because there wasn't enough call, there wasn't enough call for the 3D aspect. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So he had an old one. Mm -hmm. And he was eking out a living uh, because they stopped making, right. the, the, you know. And uh, if it wasn't for him, uh, we would have tanked. You would have succeeded was, in not succeeding. Yeah. Yeah, that, that was, um, and um, the other thing in general that I would like to say is uh, we, we figure out the job and then buy the material and material services that are required mm. to bring it in house and then put it together. Right. We have the help of some huge fabricators, yeah. and we call them uh, Pharaoh's Army. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if they're they're big enough and powerful enough, that's 
what we call them. <laughs> and they use equipment, uh, let's say fiber laser mm -hmm. cutting. Yeah. Uh, there's a company out in Pennsylvania. There's um, Alro, Leibovich, all these others. They have uh, millions uh, machinery that costs millions and millions and millions, and they operate it regularly without being able to tap into that. Uh, we're out of business yeah. because wow. there's no way right. our volume of business can support. So there's this tug of war of w what sort of uh, equipment do you want to bring in-house right. so mm -hmm. you're not struggling with lead times and you have control over your deadlines right. and what will actually pay for itself. Right. So um, you've probably yeah. heard of Laser Center. Yeah. Yeah. Sean Bird. I, I, every fabricator, I, every single fabricator I know mm -hmm. knows of them. Right. Yeah. Um, now, when you get into specialized stuff, let's say uh, CMRP, Chicago Metal Road Products, they have some capability, again, that if we couldn't tap into, mm. uh, we'd hit uh, a complete dead end with some of these projects. Mm. And unlike uh, Laser Center, who's set up to do that volume right. for people like us, CMRP, a national company like that, international company like that, could just as easily say, Vector, we just assume not. I mean, right. I walk right. into their facility sometimes, and I go, ah, right. why would they <laughs> even bother mm -hmm. with this nuisance that I've got for them? But they're interested too, the Wendt family. Right. Right. So, uh, and we can say that about many other companies who, for business reasons, could say, you know, you're, you're interrupting. Right. <laughs> Yeah. So I, I will say, just you, you brought the, 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 the story of the uh, art installation in Jackson Park, Yoko Ono, but inviting kind of everybody right. that worked on it. I think sometimes these people get overlooked, and any moment of appreciation like that goes a long way. Oh. So I think for them to kind of be a part of something like that is, is, is something that allows uh, the fabricator maybe get a little bit of the spotlight, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh and it goes right into the shop and the people doing it. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because when they understand that they're working on a, a piece of art that is gonna be viewed publicly, it's a huge uh, it's a change up from their normal work week oh, yeah. Yeah. responsibilities. Mm -hmm. And they're thrilled. Uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's funny. The, the, um, if you were to ask most people, they would say the average uh, a member of the American public isn't that interested in art. Right. Mm. But if you approach them to help you with one, Craig, suddenly it, it's a completely different story. Everybody's yeah, right. interested in art. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> because it's fun to look at. It's fun to yeah. get your and picture be part with. of. It's it's a job that they'll take their families to look at, you Absolutely. know, and and the the basketball mm. hoops are, don't do that. Exactly. <laughs> right. So well, and it's it sounds to me like you guys I mean for your for all your artistic and technical capabilities, it sounds like your relationship building skill has really been an endemic part of your success as well. I mean your ability to go and, and call these people up who have huge volumes of work and say, Hey, can you handle this? And they sounds like they inevitably say yes. That Yeah. I, I mean we we can get uh some credit there for for developing relationship sharing mm -hmm. responsibility and recognition and all the rest of it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're good at that. I've always enjoyed doing that. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I didn't talk the Went family into being <laughs> interested <laughs> in fooling with these art projects. Right. So it's a two-way two street yeah, there. Yeah, not, sure. ev not everyone is interested in. Yeah. Right. True. I, I recently did some research trying to find, you know, suppliers of, rolled cone shapes and I, I came up dry really yeah. i mean oh. i found some people they're like eh, it's not really our if it was you know 10 feet in diameter correct you know it's like so or if there were 100 of ten, them yeah i was about to say yeah yeah well i mean so it, it's the a, way they kind of approach their business yeah. Yeah. right every and everybody has that right everybody's running a, sure. a business has a responsibility and the right to decide what kind of work they do yeah. and what we've done is found What's well, good to have that knowledge of where um, to go. Rocky Structures, Chris Rocky, is interested in our projects. He's a structural engineer. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing to call up um, uh, a structural engineer and ask him this, that, and the other, get him involved in the product. Right. But, you know, it boils down to who wants your business. Right. right. 
It right. really is. Oh, I yeah. mean, I mean, at you, that given you, time, you want to give your business to somebody who's excited and interested yeah. in, in doing it. <laughs> Have you been able to expand that kind of supply chain or at least supply base visiting these conferences? Have you met new people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. definitely. Cool. Very cool. Uh, anything ahead for Vector? Anything in the works? Big plans? Big announcements? <laughs> <laughs> New ownership? <laughs> that happened already. New ownership has happened. <laughs> so once again, the fabricator getting you your news a year late. Thank you. <laughs> We're proud of that. That's our niche. That's our niche. Well, awesome. Well, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Absolutely. Uh, thanks for having us. It's been us. a pleasure. Yeah. yeah. It was a fun conversation. And, uh, you know, the metal fabricating universe is a big one. And just to kind of uh, talk about the way vector uh custom fab- fabricating kind of grabs its share of the universe is always kind of uh, fun to learn when it's uh, juxtaposed against the entire industry because as we describe a lot of a lot of different work a lot of different uh values a lot of different results and uh yeah it's a, it's a good industry to cover that's right and uh what's the uh url of the website just for vector vector fabricating.com there you go there check you it go. out so uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Steve. Thank you, Lincoln. Uh, be sure to rate, review, and subscribe. Uh, tell them my mom really appreciates the nice comments. So uh, <laughs> please go to where you download your podcast and leave a nice comment. You can leave a negative comment, too. We might actually celebrate those a little bit yeah, more. We'll talk about those more. Actually. Yeah. We'll talk about those more. Actually. And if you have a question, comment, or even an idea for a podcast, uh, send us a note at podcast at thefabricator.com. I'm rolling, man. No mistakes. Anything else? (laughs) That's it? Just let it go? All right. Thanks for joining us, and uh, be sure and catch the next episode when it drops. (laughs) Peace out. The Fabricator Podcast is a production of Fabricators and Manufacturers Association, located in Elgin, Illinois. The show is hosted by Dan Davis and the staff of FMA Communications. The podcast is produced by Gareth Slager and recorded and edited with the help of Brandon Geyer. Sales support provided by Andy Flando. Additional production support by Elizabeth Gavin, Dana Weicker, Mary Diamond, Mike Owens, and me, Sarah Spring. Thank you for listening.